My name is Michelle Lee. My name is Renee Clark. My name is Derek Wong. My name is Amy Young. My name is Robin. My name is Maxine. My name is Dylan Wilcock. I'm 26 years old. I'm 21 years old. 20 years old. 22. 25 years old. Oh, I'm 50. I am half Sicilian, half Irish. Half black, half Mexican, Greek and Scottish heritage. Chinese American. Taiwanese American. Korean American. Caucasian. Currently, I am dating someone. We've been together for about a year and a half. I don't know if I'm currently in a relationship. I've been dating someone and his nickname is my pseudo boyfriend. Recently just got back together this past month. We've been married for 28 years. To me, intimacy means affection and love and a, you know, physical but also emotional bond. Intimacy is when, when you're just comfortable. Being able to communicate openly about anything. Sharing your most personal, deep thoughts and feelings. Having the other person understand you without any words needing to be said. Not getting sick of someone after spending like three consecutive days with them. Them allowing you to appreciate them and you allowing them to appreciate you. When you're young, it's more of intimacy is just Let's get bit. But I think as I get older, hopefully I'll get a little more romantic. <laughs> this was not a trade he learned. <laughs> My own opinion on why intimate relationships are important is in some sense probably why I ended up studying them. I think a lot of us have an intuitive sense that no matter what we're doing in work or you know the day-to-day -day life, that when it comes down to it at the end of the day, uh, it's our relationships with close others that, for many of us, are the most defining sorts of experiences in our life. Um, I, I find this when I tell people what I do for a living. Everybody is interested in their own relationships. Everybody wants to know how they work. Uh, it's one of those things that if I'm on an airplane or something and I tell people what I do, they, they want my opinion on what's going on with their, their you know, son or their lover or their spouse or something that it's, uh, it's intuitively meaningful to a lot of us. And on one hand, we feel like we know a lot about it because we have this direct personal experience. On the other hand, we feel that we have no clue what's going on at all. It was weird because you don't normally just do this, but I, I told him I loved him. It, and it just came out like I didn't expect it. And it just kind of threw me off because you, know, you might tell your friend, I love you, but I knew when I said that, that it wasn't just something I would tell my friend. I think when he actually came over and asked for my number, and um, I get a little shaky. <laughs> I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't even remember. I can remember my number. <laughs> <laughs> when I look back as a young man, I didn't know quite what love was. I was kind of searching for it. We'd gone together quite a while before we made any commitments to each other. And um, one night I woke up, and I knew I wanted to get married. When I start my class that I teach on intimate relationships, I usually ask the class, what's the relationship between your personal experiences and the science of intimate relationship? The kind of answer that I would give to this question is the following, that some experiences are very pivotal in close relationships, and I think are probably helpful for the scientists to have experienced. The reason I say that is because I think experiencing these emotions convinces you for once and for all of their power. I know it sounds stupid, but I, I couldn't breathe around the person. The feeling in my stomach was so strong, I knew that it was something major. Whenever I was with that person, I, I didn't want to be with anyone else. And I never got tired of them, you know? It was, just, it was so easy and effortless. It's a feeling that I would do anything for him, and I don't know that I could say that for many other people. I just never felt that way before, and it was some, something where I felt like I wanted to be with the person all the time. Even when he calls, you know what I mean? Like, he calls on the phone, and it still feels like it's, you know, I really want to talk to him. I'm so excited to talk to him. You know, he, he comes in the door. It's so stupid, but he comes in the door at night, and I'm like, oh, Josh is here. The single most important factor in people's quality of life their quality of their relationships. There's a substantial body of research that if you look at people's well-being, what matters most in predicting their well-being is the quality of their close relationships. If you look at depression and suicide, the single biggest cause 
is problems in close relationships. There are many problems in life, but no matter how difficult one's life is, if your close relationships are going well, it seems not only bearable, but perhaps wonderful. In wartime, people who are poor, if their relationships are going well, they can be happy. Contrary-wise, a person can be rich and famous and living in a wonderful society and have everything available. And if they're not getting along with their children or their loved ones or their friends, life can be awful.